Elite Dangerous Odyssey is out, but I know a lot of you guys are still on edge whether you should actually get the update. Can your machine actually run it? So today we're going to dive into the performance of the update, we're going to look at the FPS, we're going to compare it to Horizon, we're going to compare it to the Alpha test. Today's video is brought to you by Rich Wallet. Rich create modern compact wallets made from premium materials like titanium, carbon fiber, or aluminum. In fact, Rich is so competent a product that they offer you a 45 day test drive with a full refund if you don't like it. But why wouldn't you like them? The wallets are easily half the size of a traditional wallet, but despite that, they can still hold up to 12 cards and has a money clip on the side. All the wallets also come with RFID blocking to prevent digital theft. So check out Rich Wallet on rich.com forward slash D2EA and use offer code D2EA to get 10% off. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we're going to look at the performance of Elite Dangerous Odyssey and just as last time I'm going to be using MSI Afterburner to do all my data collection where I'll be recording the average FPS as well as the low 1%. On the screen you will in all clips be able to see GPU utilization and memory as well as CPU utilization, system memory and the current FPS. In the lower right hand corner you will see a little icon indicating whether this clip belongs to Horizon or belongs to Odyssey. Specs for the machine is I'll be running with a Ryzen 9 3950X, 32 gigabytes of 3200 MHz uh, memory, a 2080 Ti for graphics, games running off an NVMe SSD. These specs may not be comparable to your machine, maybe you have a better graphics card, maybe you have a worse graphics card, but this is just to give you a relative comparison of FPS, so you can see whether you should expect more or less. In terms of game settings, I will of course be using all the same game settings as I did last time and also running the game in 4K. So let's dive right into the first test, which is the docking bay test. Static camera inside a docking bay, lots of things happening and lots of light and things going on here. And as you can see from the result here, I didn't really see any difference between the alpha test and Odyssey after it was live. It is a significant decrease from the performance I saw in Horizons compared to Odyssey and again, yeah. No, I was not able to detect any differences. Small, minor things here and there, but this is what I would consider within measuring tolerances. Maybe there's a bit of an improvement on the low 1%, which is going to make it feel a little bit less stuttery. But overall, it was nowhere near what we had in Horizons. Next up is a planetary ring, very common place if you're doing mining or, or hazardous sites, stuff like that. I'm on the same planet in the same ring, but obviously the planets have moved a little bit and rotated, so I'm not sure if I got the exact same spot, but I tried to mimic the lighting situation as much as possible. And here you can see the differences. While the drop here is not as bad as it was for the station interior, there is still a significant decrease in the performance compared to the alpha test. The little 4 FPS difference that I see between the alpha and the live game, I'm not sure that could just be measuring inconsistencies. I wouldn't really contribute that too much. It, I still think that within tolerances, but still comparing it to Horizon, you're probably going to be expecting in the planet ring to lose about 24% of your um, total FPS. Next, we move down planet side and we want to test out the new textures and we're going to be doing a test from two kilometers above the surface, just flying in a ship over the surface. And here you can see there was actually a little bit of an increase here from, um, from the alpha test, but still we are quite far off what we saw in Rises. I will say the game also does look a lot prettier. We're not even close. So we also here, we're going to see a very significant drop uh, in FPS. Just to see the effect of an atmosphere, I went to a planet with an atmosphere just to kind of give it a comparison. And we can see that I dropped from the around 100 FPS I had before down to uh, 86 FPS. It's a little bit higher once again compared to what we had in the alpha test. So it's it seems to they've done something with the planet textures that's a little bit more optimized than it was before. Again, the atmosphere is definitely still going to give you a performance hit. And you remember when we were flying over a planet, I was getting 173 FPS in Horizons. Next, I wanna move a little bit closer and really get up close and personal with the new textures. So we're gonna be driving over a planet. In this case, we're gonna start with a planet without an atmosphere. Again, we saw a very sharp increase in the alpha test, but we actually seen a noticeable difference in the live game. So again, highlighting that point, I definitely think Frontier has optimized something with the, uh, with the planetary textures compared to the alpha test. We're still far off about half of what we got in Horizons, but at least there is a small increase. 
And similarly, to get up close and personal with the textures, I've also done a test where I am walking over a planet. Again, I wasn't able to get the exact same spot. Uh, the one I got from the uh, alpha test had a lot more plants because now plants are a lot more scattered out than they were in the alpha test. And I couldn't get the exact same spot because it was in the dark in the night of the planet. So I tried to find something with a similar lighting condition as I, uh, as I had on, uh, on the alpha test. And here again, we can see there has been some improvement over um, over the alpha test where I was actually gaining like almost 20 FPS up and even my low 1% was about where my average was. So there's definitely been some improvement planet side. I think that is safe to say. And the final one is the worst of them all. And that is walking around inside a station. During the alpha test, I wasn't even able to pass 50 FPS average running inside a station. And looking at the numbers, it hasn't really improved. I'm losing a bit on the average. I gained a bit on the low 1%. Overall, it felt pretty much the same. Not even being able to pass 60 FPS inside a station um, with a relatively powerful system. I know I'm running 4K and I'm running with some relatively high graphics settings, but still, I would still be, hope that I'll be able to push a little bit more than 45 FPS inside a station. So this leaves us with one burning question. Would I recommend you get Odyssey? And I would say if you have a powerful system, go ahead. You most likely already have then. If you're running on a lower end system, I would actually say wait. Because yeah, you're going to be able to play, but you're going to be able to watch it as a slide deck. It's going to be very choppy for you in some situations and in some places it would be damn near unplayable for you. Frontier has a lot of work in front of them if they're going to make this run on console by autumn. And I know the Frontier is aware of this. They actually posted a hotfix yesterday and in the bottom of that patch note, they did mention that they are aware of these performance issues and it is something that they are working on to improve. So there are improvements coming and hopefully we're going to see improvements even before the, uh, the console launch at the autumn. And I will, of course, keep you guys updated if anything happens. So if you're still on edge and whether you should get it, do stay tuned to the channel because with Frontier Makes Changes, I'll post a new video like this. We'll be going over the statistics again so we can once again compare and see if there's any improvements and you can then begin to make a decision on when you feel it's good enough for you to get on board Odyssey. Now, a few final things I just want to mention is if you are considering getting Odyssey and you haven't gotten it yet, if you're playing through the standalone launcher, so not through Steam, not through Epic, you can use getelite.d2ea.com. That will take you to the Frontier store where you can, uh, can get the update. And then I get a little kickback. And finally, I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you want to help me towards that goal, then do go down and hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. But that's it for this time. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.